In this tutorial, I'll introduce you to activity data settings related to detailed HVAC modelling and then show you how to set up zone groups. Understanding the concepts associated with these elements of model data provides an essential foundation prior to moving on to modelling any system in detailed HVAC. In this first part of the tutorial, I'll cover detailed HVAC activity data. To start using Detailed HVAC, the first thing I need to do is enable it in the Model Options dialog, here under the HVAC header. The two options generally used are the Simple and Detailed HVAC options, but there is also a Compact option. You can use the Compact option to model some complex HVAC system types in Energy Plus, but it is no longer fully supported by Design Builder and we would strongly recommend using Detailed HVAC for modelling HVAC systems. After selecting Detailed HVAC, I can select either the Simple or Detailed HVAC Activity Data. Choosing the Simple HVAC Data option enables you to define heating and cooling set points and schedules from the Activity and HVAC tabs in the normal way. The simple option has limited flexibility in that you can only define one occupied and unoccupied or setback temperature set point, but it can be useful because the activity related HVAC data will already be set up correctly based on the activity selection. The detailed HVAC data option is a more flexible way to enter scheduled set points without the restriction of using only one set point and setback value, enabling multiple set points to be defined at different times of the day or year. Selecting the detailed HVAC activity data option means that the heating and cooling set points in the activity tab and the operating schedules in the HVAC tab become redundant for normal simulations, but are still used in heating and cooling design calculations. If the detailed HVAC activity data option is selected, you must ensure that you create appropriate schedules that cover the operating parameters of your building throughout the year. I'll select the simple HVAC activity data option which will be used for the majority of the HVAC tutorials. After clicking OK to exit model options, you'll see that a HVAC system option is now visible here in the navigation panel, enabling you to quickly see when detailed HVAC is set in model options. After navigating to the HVAC system level, the Add Zone Group, Add Loop, Load HVAC Template and Save HVAC Template icons are displayed here in the toolbar. The options are also available here in the Info panel if Learning Mode is enabled. Here in the Activity tab, you can see the Environmental Control set points, enabling you to set one internal condition during occupancy here and a setback condition outside occupied periods for example to provide fabric protection at weekends or holidays during the heating season. In detailed HVAC as in simple HVAC the activity tab is also where you define the domestic hot water Humidity set points, ventilation cooling set points, and the minimum fresh air parameters. The operation schedule for each HVAC system is defined here in the HVAC tab. The operation schedules define the times when full and setback 
set points should be met. And the set point data on the activity tab define the actual set point values. The main HVAC template at the top of this HVAC model data tab dictates which of the systems are enabled by default. If a system is switched off in this tab, it's excluded from the heating and cooling design calculations. However, it will still be included in detailed HVAC simulations. An operation schedule is set automatically by the activity template for each subsystem. You can see here that all these default to the open office activity. But you can change these if required. The mechanical ventilation and domestic hot water operation schedules default automatically to occupancy. But the heating and cooling systems use plant specific heating and cooling schedules as these systems also need to operate to meet setback conditions outside occupied periods. There are important differences between plant and occupancy schedules which use temperature and fractional compact schedules respectively. If you're not familiar with the different types of schedule, I'd strongly recommend that you refer to the help file before modifying these settings. There is an additional setting required here for mechanical ventilation and the various options are described in the basic model data activities tutorial and the help file. This minimum fresh air per person default setting will result in the ventilation rate being defined here in the activity tab under the minimum fresh air header. If any of your zones have natural ventilation you must ensure that this is enabled in the HVAC tab and then define the NatVent parameters in the normal way outside the detailed HVAC environment. There is a useful reminder of which data is used when here in the info panel. There's also an aid memoir here in the help file which summarizes which data is used in the simulation depending on whether the simple or detailed HVAC option is selected. In detailed HVAC, zones having the same HVAC equipment are grouped together to form zone groups which I'll now describe. Zone groups enable you to define a different systems in different parts of your building. For example, adding a perimeter heating system to perimeter zones with a different configuration for internal zones. A building zone can only be assigned to one zone group. The zone group concept enables a simplified HVAC schematic representation as only one set of equipment and connections needs to be defined for the group while still enabling you to change equipment properties for individual zones such as terminal unit ratings or efficiencies. To assign a zone group or groups, I go to the HVAC system in the navigation panel. Now click on the add zone group icon and move the mouse into the layout tab. Then left click again to place the zone group. If you have more than one zone group, simply zoom out and place them in the layout screen by left clicking as many times as required. I'll create two zone groups, but only use one in this tutorial as the basic principles are the same for all zone groups. I can delete the unwanted group in the normal way by left clicking once to select the object and using the delete command. Note that selecting the zone group also enables me to move and clone it. 
I now need to assign zones to my zone group. I do this by selecting the zone group and using the edit dialog which I can access via the toolbar or my right mouse button. If I try to navigate to the zone group I'll be prompted to add zones to it if I haven't done so already. The general tab enables me to select which zones to assign to this group. If I had already assigned zones to another group they would not be visible and available for selection here. I can name my zone groups here. I'll select all zones at building level and could simply deselect any zones served by a different HVAC system. Clicking OK I can now see in the layout screen and the navigator panel that the zones have been added to the zone group. I'll now navigate to one of the zones in the zone group and review the edit dialog. You should take a moment to read the important information here in the info panel in the general tab. The values in this tab are applied as the defaults to all zones when first added to the zone group. After creating the zone group I can go to a zone, make a change then apply that change to different zones in the group if required. For example here I'll reduce the heating design margin to 20% by entering the value 1.2. I can then apply that to any or all of the zones in the group using the tick boxes in the target tab. I'll select all at building level and apply that. Navigating back to a different zone I can see that the new value has been applied. Most of these inputs are self-explanatory, with the data being obtained from the building's HVAC design. Humidity control can be enabled by selecting this option. With the simple HVAC activity data selected, the Humidistat control will be based on the zone relative humidity settings in the activity tab, in conjunction with the demand schedules defined here. If the detailed HVAC activity data option is selected, then the zone default schedule will define both the set point and the plant timing schedule. The cooling minimum airflow fraction is only used for calculating the minimum VAV supply airflow rate when sizing the system. The cooling and heating sizing factors or design margins are set by default to the ASHRAE requirements of 15 and 25 percent respectively. You should adjust these to meet your particular code or modelling requirements. There are three options for the cooling and heating design airflow method. The default design day setting calculates the zone design cooling or heating airflow rate using the zone sizing information and a design day simulation, with the only limitation being to meet the, the minimum outside air requirements. Flow per zone uses a specified cooling or heating design airflow rate, and design day with limit uses the maximum from heating or cooling minimum flow per zone floor area and heating or cooling minimum airflow to set a lower limit on the design maximum heating or cooling airflow rate. If the mechanical ventilation outside air definition data is changed in the HVAC model data tab, this value in the associated zones will update automatically. In this tutorial I've introduced the important topics of HVAC activity data and zone groups. Now I've assigned zones to my zone group, 
I can start to consider adding appropriate HVAC components to the system. Not all HVAC systems require centralised plant with air and water loops. Some or all of the building zones may have localised or zone based standalone systems such as electric convector heaters or air conditioning units. So I'll introduce zone based components in the next tutorial.